I'm John Flack, uh, member of the uh, Hypertension Council and uh, from Southern Illinois University, a hypertension specialist. Uh, Want to tell us about you? Sure. Uh, I'm Michelle Gums. I'm at the University of Florida in the Division of Nephrology, Hypertension, and Renal Transplantation. And I run a basic research lab where we study the role of circadian clock proteins in the kidney and how they affect blood pressure regulation and renal sodium handling. Dr. Gums, can you tell us a bit about chronotherapy uh, and uh, that uh, circadian uh, rhythm and how it, it's potentially going to impact, say, say, patient care. Sure, sure. So the idea behind chronotherapy is using the time of day to maximize uh, efficacy and reduce side effects. And so part of the way we, we hope that our work contributes to this area is in studying the basic biology of these circadian rhythms. Blood pressure has a circadian rhythm. It's higher when we're up and active and lower at night while we rest. And when you lose that circadian rhythm to blood pressure, it's a associated with adverse cardiovascular outcomes. So the idea um, in people who might have high, high blood pressure in the nighttime is that perhaps giving an antihypertensive uh, in the night instead of in the morning could be more effective. And there are ongoing studies to, to test that in larger patient populations. But I think part of the appeal of chronotherapy is that it could be uh, applied as part of a precision medicine or a personalized approach where we target the right people um, to take the right drug at the right time. You gave a fascinating presentation uh, this morning about clock genes, sodium handling, knockout uh, models of this. Do you see any way to uh, leverage or to change the activity of those clock genes other than by dosing medicines in the evening, say in drug development? any hope there? So I, I think there there are a lot of things on, on the horizon. There are a couple of groups around the country and in Europe who are working on developing a circadian blood test and, and that could be something that would be used clinically that you might be able to identify patients who have circadian disruption and and then perhaps you know design treatments around that. Some of the other things um, that, that can be used, and this is something I practice in my own life, um, is, is good circadian hygiene is the way I refer to it. Um, and there, there's there been uh, quite a bit of work done on this idea um, by some researchers uh, in Germany, actually. The idea that, um, you know, you take care of your circadian rhythm and your circadian rhythm will take care of you. So one of the things I do, I try to keep the same schedule that I that I have during the week on, on the weekend. And you kind of avoid this idea of social jet lag, where you follow one schedule Monday through Friday and then a totally different schedule on the weekend. And it's the reason that most of us feel terrible on Monday morning. And so that, that I idea of getting adequate sleep and, and keeping a consistent schedule is one uh, sort of low-tech, uh, if you will, way to address some of these problems. One final question. Uh, given some of the data that's already out there by Hermita's group and showing that nighttime dosing of drugs improves, improves cardiovascular risk compared to daytime dosing, fewer side effects, lower blood pressure at night. Why hasn't this caught on more? That's a great question, and and I think some of the discussion after today's session uh, was was centered around um, some of the skepticism that some of these studies have um, encountered. And something uh, one of my physician colleagues has shared with me is that it's hard enough to get people to take their medication, let alone take it at a certain time of day. And so that, that's one barrier would be um, with adherence. Uh, I, think, I think something else, some of the data that come out that are mixed is because this chronotherapeutic approach, um, as I mentioned, I think it lends itself to the idea of precision or personalized medicine. And so taking a study with all comers and applying a nighttime dosing of an antihypertensive, um, you know, you may or may not see an effect. I think it's really, uh, and something that the, the studies coming out of Spain have done, because they use the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, they're well aware of who has nocturnal hypertension or who has non-dipping hypertension, because those are perhaps the people that would most benefit from this type of intervention? Well, as an N of one, our practice is uh, actually nocturnally dosed, non-diuretic drugs given once daily in the mm -hmm. evening for the last several years. And uh, we have 
virtually no problems in getting patients to uh, uh, actually uh, uh, do it. And when we explain to them lower blood pressure at night, and we have ambulatory monitoring on some mm -hmm. fewer side effects, and there is at least a possibility, a probability that there is greater cardiovascular risk reduction. Right. Right. And none of those studies have shown that nighttime dosing is worse than the daytime, but I think one of the problems it's running into is our conventional default for dosing of once daily drugs has been in the morning. Right. And it just goes against convention. Right, yeah, that, that's a terrific point. And I think it's something that I hope will gain more recognition, not just that the targets of these drugs, but uh, as the second speaker today mentioned, the metabolism of those drugs can also vary with the time of day. And so the comes back to the right drug at the right time. And I think your work also basically highlights how important sodium handling is into not only what our blood pressure is, but its circadian rhythm, and uh, I think it's uh, gonna make a great contribution to, uh, to what we know about the science, and uh, hopefully will lead us to better clinical interventions and even maybe drug development. Thank you.